Hey guys, this video is a little different. I'm celebrating hitting a thousand subscribers on this channel, so thank you very much to all of you who have joined on, and I'm so glad that you've enjoyed these videos. So I thought it'd be special to do something a little different with this one. I'm making this diorama, again, based off of a photo that I took years ago, but really for the sole purpose of photographing and filming it. I'm not making it into a piece that can be displayed later on. The outside of it is going to be kind of ugly. Here is one of the photos I took of this place years back. When I got there, I loved how there were just holes in the ceiling and roof with the sunlight coming in and creating interesting shadows and even moss and just decay from the weather made this place really unique. So I wanted to try to recreate that with even making some of the wooden rafters above the ceiling so that we can get really interesting shadows coming in when I film it. And yes, I may destroy it, but you'll have to see why at the end. So to catch up on what I've been doing here, I just used my Dremel to rough up the surface of this foam board so it could be weathered, and then I added some different layers of paint, as well as this sheet of styrene plastic that is molded to look like tile. I painted the tile sheet and then I used a gloss varnish over top to give it that little bit of a tile shine. Then I used a couple different pigment powders to get that mossy moldy look. This wall was pretty similar. I cut out a couple spots for windows, I roughed it up and I started painting it. And now I'm adding some more of that tile sheet. I'm using multiple layers and different colors of paint to make it look like it's weathered and there were other layers of paint underneath. And I'm stippling it on with some foam so it has that broken up look. Now I'm gluing the MDF boards in place so that I can actually glue the foam parts of the wall on. And here I'm just painting in a couple places that the windows are going to be. They were boarded up from the outside and so it's just going to be darkness behind them. And this is a small third wall that I'll be using. So I have a funny story here. A couple weeks ago I got an order in for some hobby supplies and this jar of brown wash came in and somehow right when I got into my project room I dropped this jar of wash and the lid popped right off and the wash went all over the carpet. I had a fun next couple hours trying to get that stain out and I ordered a plastic carpet protector for future use. So at this point I'm just using a black ink in the airbrush just to darken and weather different parts of the wall. These are the windows, I 3D modeled and printed them on my 3D printer, and now I'm just using a wash to dirty them up. On the right side, there's actually not going to be windows, and we're going to use a little piece of matte board to look like it's a plywood board boarded up over it. To make it look like wood, I'm using the airbrush to paint a burnt umber color first, and then I'm going to stipple on a darker brown color in different areas. In the original photo, the wall was really messed up in different places like this, so I'm trying to recreate that by digging out some foam and I'm going to go in with different colors of paint now to hopefully get different levels of decomposition. The windows that are still there had some curtains over them, so I've taken a really fine silk-like material so that it can move easily and cut that and I'm just gluing that to a piece of styrene rod like a curtain rod. Now I'm just using really watered down paint to make it really dirty looking and then some darker stronger bits of paint to to give it some deep stains. 
I haven't worked with fabric all that much yet, and I'm really not that good. But once I tied the one side off, I used some watered down glue so that once it dries, it holds its form better. This is a tip I learned from Bentley House Minis. You should definitely go check out her channel. So now I just dirtied up the top a little more and I'm gluing it in place over the windows. Once they were dried, I cut them off to the right length. I'm using ground up pastels to really make this wall look even more decayed and dirty. Now onto the big washing machine. I 3D printed this out and there was a crack so I'm just filling it with some epoxy sculpt. It's a pretty good two part epoxy that is very sculptable and once it dries you can sand it, carve it, and it just works really well. I 3D modeled this like everything else I've done in Shaper 3D on my iPad Pro and I had to print this in a lot of different parts because of how big it is. Here I'm just cutting some styrene rod to use as legs, as I did not print those. After priming it and giving it a coat or two in a metallic color, I'm spraying on some black ink to darken some areas and weather it. And now I'm going to do the same for the rest. There's a large radiator that goes across most of the back wall, so I printed this in three different parts and I'm going to glue them together. First I'm just priming them with this red-brown color. And now I'm using pigment powders, rust and old rust and a couple different shades to make a layer of rust underneath. Then I dab on some liquid latex and put my first coat of paint. Once the paint dries, I can rub it with my fingers and it'll peel some of the paint off because of the latex. This will then reveal some of that rust texture underneath. For the floor, it's really dirty, so I'm using some tile grout again. I really like this for dust and dirt and sealing it in with some watered down Mod Podge. And then I'm gonna start using some different dirts. For dirt, I take peat moss, grind it up in an old coffee grinder. I also take dead leaves and grind those up, and sometimes different colors of dirt to make it really a nice variety. This place had a lot of trash and rubble laying around, so I'm making some foam bricks to just start scattering around on the floor. I also use some bits of wood and other materials to build up the trash. Because the ceiling was collapsing, there was a lot of material just on top of everything, so I'm adding dirt, leaves, rubble, pieces of wood, all that kind of stuff on top of the washer. I'm also using some green turf to add a little bit of mossy texture on the floor. Some more ground up pastels to really make things look dusty and worn. I wanted to add this small piece of wall so that I can get angles with my camera from both sides and make it look like I'm still inside the building. This is an electrical conduit that I'm going to have coming up the wall and I did put a little bit of wire coming out of the top so it looks realistic. 
there was an old bulletin board or something similar on the wall and it really began to decay and grow mold and moss. So I'm making that with little pieces of styrene and then I'm taking a piece of matte board and I'm just wetting it and then roughing it up with a tool to make it look like it's been decaying from moisture. And then I'll start to add the moss and mold and dirt colors. After those initial colors with washes, I'm using some different colored pigment powders for moss and dirt and really started to sell that effect. Here's just some piping that I'm putting across the walls. And I'm going in and dirtying everything up even further with pigment powders and washes. Now for the ceiling. There were a few things I wanted to do here. So I started off with this big piece of foam board and cut out the holes that I knew were in the ceiling. I really wanted to make this in a way that looked good when I lit it for photography and film. So the position of these holes needed to be correct. I'm going around and just roughing up the edges and, and then starting with the first layer of paint. Because of how much water damage there was, I knew the ceiling was going to be all different shades. So I started with that darker brown color. Now I'm going in with that brighter white color and then I started dirtying it up with a wash. I wanted these areas to look extra decayed, so I picked some of the foam out and then went in with a really dark brown wash to start. This part I wanted to make a little more smooth, like it wasn't as, as damaged, so I used some modeling paste and then went over it with different washes and powders once it was dry. These are some light fixtures that I 3D modeled and printed and I'm just dirtying them up and this is an exhaust fan hood that went over the washer. Just adding these to the ceiling and gluing them in place. I needed something that had a little more structure to it, so I'm gluing the foam board to this piece of MDF, and that will be the solid part of the ceiling. And after gluing that on top of the diorama, I'm moving on to the rafters. I built this out of just balsa wood pieces, and now I'm going in with my knife and roughing it up. These rafters were really starting to rot and decay, so I needed them to not be perfect anymore. Old wood that's been waterlogged really has this dark, dark color to it, so I'm starting with this burnt ember, but I'm going to continue to darken it down with washes and other colors. One thing that I thought was interesting in the original photos was you can see the moss and mold on the rafters. So I'm just using my pigment powders, a couple different shades of green, to make it look like they really had moss growing on the rafters for quite some time. This was just another detail that was seen hanging from the ceiling in the photos, and I thought it looked really interesting, so I'm adding it. I assume it was part of the plaster process. Now I'm going to show you a little bit what it looks like when I photograph and film these. I don't have much space so I film it in my apartment. This is the first light that I'm turning on and I'm adjusting it to get the shadows correct. Then since I knew we'd be able to see out through the ceiling, I wanted to add this blue poster board so that it looked like the sky. This light I'm shining through a little slit in a piece of paper so that it shows up Right here in the screen, it looks like a slot of light coming in, and here's the photo I took. And now with moving the light around, I can make a time-lapse effect, where it looks like time is going by, but it's really just the light moving. And if you couldn't tell, I could take the blue sky in my editing program and desaturate it so it looked more like a gray sky. I thought this worked out pretty well. Now here's where things got interesting, about destroying my work. I decided to take it outside and make it look like there was a thunderstorm. I really built this only to film, and it's so big I really didn't have a place for it in my apartment. So I decided if I destroy it in the name of art, it might be a fun thing to do. So I've set up a misting system above to get small enough rain to make it look real to scale. I'm also lighting it above with a soft light and then using a smaller light as lightning. It took a while to adjust it just right, and everything was getting soaked, so we didn't have much time.
when we were done, it had to go in the trash. So, sledgehammer. There's an incredible couple of model makers and photographers, Lori Nix and Kathleen Gerber, that made these amazing abandoned scenes over years only to photograph them and destroy them after. They only wanted the photographs, and they would spend far more time making their models than I ever would. I thought this was really interesting and helped inspire me to do this. Thanks again for a thousand subscribers. I can't wait to continue making models and sharing them with you here. If you enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks.